A new message to aliens on TRAPPIST-1. Is mankind alone in the universe? This question bothers us all the time. We always wonder if there exist other intelligent beings looking up into their night sky from very different worlds and asking the same kind of question. Perhaps civilizations more advanced than ours exist. Maybe they have achieved interstellar communication and overcome the problem of interstellar travel. Maybe they also had to deal with climate crisis and they managed to survive. This and a lot more is what we aim to discover during the next few years. But in order to do so, METI International is sending a signal towards TRAPPIST-1 system. METI is a group of scientists, sociologists, historians, anthropologists and artists who think that we should keep sending messages to aliens. So let me tell you what TRAPPIST-1 is and what their plan is to communicate with aliens. So the news is a radio signal and it's being sent on the TRAPPIST-1 system. Who's sending it? Us. Who's receiving? We hope someone or something other than us could be. But what exactly is TRAPPIST-1? And did we choose it as an ideal target? Let's find out. First of all, TRAPPIST-1 is a star designed as an ultra-cool red dwarf star. You can find it in the Aquarius constellation, but no matter how hard you try to spot it with your eyes, you'll never see it because TRAPPIST-1's apparent magnitude is very high, which means its luminosity, as seen from us on Earth, is so low you will need a good telescope to observe it. In fact, red stars are usually the coldest ones, which also make them the most dim. This small and rather cute star, with a mass of about 9% that of the Sun, has a radius slightly larger than Jupiter, and it's 12 parsecs away from us. It is believed to be quite old because its age is estimated to be 7.6 billion years, making it older than our solar system, which has an age of 4.5 billion years. This star was discovered in 2000, but it was only in 2016 that astronomers started talking about it. In fact, between 2016 and 2017, numerous observations at ground-based telescope at La Silla Observatory led to the discovery of initially three and then seven terrestrial planets around the star. This was only possible thanks to the improved technology of our time and thanks to the new methods for hunting exoplanets. In fact, during the last decades, the hunting for exoplanets became one of the most intriguing and fascinating branches of astrophysics. Teams of astronomers all over the world are busy studying the properties of such extrasolar systems, their orbiting planets, and properties such as the stability and instability of these planets, as well as the properties of protoplanetary disks from which future planets may form. As you can imagine, a huge effort is made in this sense so that we can improve our models by means of observations. As of today, we count somewhere in the region of 5,000 confirmed exoplanets, and they are all different from each other. Although this number seems quite big, it is in fact not. We still have a lot of work to do in order to improve statistics and test our models. Coming back to TRAPPIST-1 system, the orbital periods, which is the time it takes for each planet to orbit the star, have precise numerical ratios made of integers. This is what astronomers call orbital resonance. The orbital resonance could have existed since the formation of the planetary system and is predicted to lead to intense planet-to-planet -planet interactions that could drive volcanic activity on the planets. Moreover, the planets are likely to be tidally locked to TRAPPIST-1 and thus always turn the same side to their host star. As many as four of the planets are hypothesized to be located within the habitable zone of the star and thus to have temperatures suitable to the presence of liquid water and thus the development of life. All the planets in the TRAPPIST-1 system transit their star, meaning that they pass in front of it. This is indeed how we found them. In fact, when planets pass in front of their star's disk, they form regular and repeated shadows that are cast during transit, creating a typical signal. Thanks to the transit signals, we can measure the orbital periods and can calculate the sizes of the planets. It's like having a light coming towards you and some globes are passing between you and the beam of light. You can tell which globe is the largest by looking at the properties of its shadow. The exact time at which the planets transit also provides us with a means to measure their mass through the laws of universal gravitation. But once you know the mass of the planet and you also know its size, which means its radius, you can easily compute an estimate of its density and therefore its bulk properties. Astrophysical studies of this kind show that the planets orbiting TRAPPIST-1 are consistent with a rocky composition. 
The team also said that they found that the planets have sizes and masses comparable to the Earth and Venus, which is unusual because it is not easy with the available methods and technologies to spot planets of such small mass. Because we know the distance of the planets to their star and the temperature of the star, we can deduce that they receive an amount of light that is similar to many of the planets in our solar system from Mercury to Mars. During transit, some of the starlight goes through the atmosphere of the planets, getting transformed by the chemical composition of the atmosphere and by its vertical structure. This means that astronomers can remotely study the climates of terrestrial worlds beyond our own solar system. The TRAPPIST-1's worlds are the most optimal currently at our disposal. They are providing humanity with its first opportunity at discovering evidence of biology beyond our solar system. However, the discovery of planets around TRAPPIST-1 was not just a lucky one. For example, we know that ultra-cool stars are the most frequent kind of star in our galaxy. So if we find some planets around them, it is like studying the most comet planets that exist. The second reason to choose ultra-cool stars is that since they are usually very small, it improves enormously our capacity to discover the planets with the transit method discussed before. However, we should always keep in mind that finding planets orbiting ultra-cool dwarfs means that we find planets like our Earth in several aspects, but different in several others. For instance, the amount and type of light the planets receive are not the same as what we receive on Earth. Also, the proximity of the TRAPPIST-1 planets to their star means that they are likely to be tidally locked. This signifies that there is a permanent day side and a permanent night side. How this affects their climate remains mostly unknown. In any case, TRAPPIST-1 is one of the best planetary system candidates to host life as we know it. That's why we're sending a radio signal there. Of course, in order to understand if someone has received the message, we should also be able to receive a response. But let's see what the signal consists of and what we're going to do in order to send it to the aliens. Hey there, before moving on, be sure to like or dislike the video so that we can continue to improve and make these videos better for you, the viewer. Plus, be sure to subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification so you don't miss any of our weekly videos. Coming back to our message. When we say signal, we just think about some waves that are being sent from one place to another in order to share information or communicate something. But what kind of information can be hidden in a signal? The message we're about to send to TRAPPIST-1 has been devised by METI International. METI, as previously stated, is a group of scientists, sociologists, historians, anthropologists and artists who have come together with a common belief that humanity would benefit from beaming messages to the stars rather than just waiting to receive a message from the aliens. Basically, what METI does, or aims to do, is to send a DM on the aliens' Instagram profile. In fact, METI stands for Messaging Extraterrestrial Intelligence. It is kind of the opposite of SETI, which is the more passive search for extraterrestrial intelligence. SETI experts somehow condemn actively sending messages to extraterrestrial life because they think this could be dangerous for us and it will expose us to unpredictable consequences, which makes sense considering that we do not really know if aliens are going to be peaceful or not. In any case, the Goon Hilly Satellite Earth Station in Cornwall, UK will broadcast a climate change message on October 4 to coincide with the beginning of World Space Week, which this year has the theme of space and sustainability. Any aliens receiving our message won't be surprised to hear about our climate crisis, Douglas Vakoch, president of METI International, stated. They've had decades to observe our plight from afar. We actually don't know and don't really think that aliens are aware of our existence. But, in any case, communicating with them will be difficult. The immediate thing to think about is that alien life will not know our languages. They can't understand us if we say hello or ciao or ni hao. They also won't understand our culture and may even interpret the universe around them differently than we do. Aliens might have never invented Nutella. But who knows, they might have created some delicious cakes with some giant delicious fruit typical of their planet. The great challenge of interstellar communication is to establish a common ground for understanding. To tackle this, the goon Healy message will begin with a periodic table of elements. Since the chemical elements are universal, METI International argue that any scientifically knowledgeable aliens should recognize it. That content would create a common ground for the message to then describe some of the environmental challenges we're facing here on Earth. Talking instead about time, we know that TRAPPIST-1 is 39 light years away. Since our signal will travel at the speed of light, as all waves do, it will take 39 years to reach. And if they ever respond, it will take another 39 years to come back. 
so we should not expect a reply for at least 78 years. Well, the message's authors hope is that this alien civilization is old enough to have managed to survive perhaps millions or even billions of years, thus overcoming the climate issues. So basically, what they think is that if aliens ever got to know about our climate crisis, they will be merciful and understanding and will help us solve our problems. Hearing from such aliens might give us confidence that we can solve our own climate problems. The signal will also contain music as well as scientific information. METI International has teamed up with the Stahiya Music Festival in Uzbekistan, which is a non-profit project raising awareness of the drying up of the Aral Sea, which local communities rely on for fishing. The festival's organizers are curating the musical choices in the message, which includes tracks such as Beauty of the Earth by Soviet electronic music pioneer Eduard Artemyev, Through the Asteroid Belt by The Comet is Coming, and a selection of tunes from artists performing at the festival, which will be held from May 6th through to May 8th. Maybe music might be the hardest part of the message for the aliens to interpret, because we think music is a unique characteristic of humankind, like a biological signature. Nevertheless, we also think that musical selections are perhaps the parts of the message that are most likely to prompt alien recipients to say, tell us more. The signal we are sending is not the first one of its kind. We already sent something like this before. For example, one of those transmissions was the Frank Drake's famous Arecibo message sent in 1974 and four messages beamed into space from the Evpatoria radio telescope in Crimea by the late Russian radio astronomer Alexander Zaitsev. Needless to say, it's really unlikely we'll get to hear from aliens anytime soon. It simply wouldn't be realistic to think that we're going to receive a response from TRAPPIST-1's inhabitants. More realistically, we may need to repeat transmissions like the one to TRAPPIST-1 to hundreds, thousands, even millions of stars before we reach one that is inhabited by radio astronomers. This video ends here. Thanks for watching. What do you think about TRAPPIST-1? Do you think aliens out there can hear us? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and see you next time on the channel.